you glory. Let's tell him, let's give him the praise, let's give him the glory. If you are full of the Holy Spirit, I want you to shout in the Holy Spirit. Shout in tongues, shout in words. Raka roba kadara basha, raka dara basha, anta tara ba voro koshin dara ba, raba ba raka doro ba kasha raka dara basha. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Shout the shout of victory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you worship. Hallelujah to the great God. Hallelujah to the living God. Raka doro ba shara ba ba raba shanda dara ba ka, roba kadara ba ka shara ba voro ba kadara ba shanda. Raba banda daraba kasha raba boro kora hindo roba kadara ba kasha raba baraka raka doro ba kadara ba shara ba boro ba kadara ba shanda. All the glory belongs to you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. You can sit down, please. Hallelujah. Say with me, all the glory belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Today, I just want to us to get ready for what is coming and to prepare ourselves before the Lord. I call it the coming move of God. Amen. And the glory of God. Say with me the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now who is the glory of God? On Friday, we shared and we explained to you who is the glory of God. Who knows who is the glory of God? Hallelujah. Thank God you are listening. <laughs> Amen. We had a glorious time in, in um, Canada. It was powerful. It was glorious. And I believe that we are entering into a new era of God's glory. And um, the days of powerlessness is over. Amen. Let's go to John 7, 37. 46 we'll read very fast let's read aloud one two three go on the last day that great day of the feast jesus stood and cried out saying if anyone tests let him come to me and drink amen amen if anyone tests let him come to me and drink the bible says he cried out it means he put emphasis on his voice he was not just speaking, he was echoing something. He was saying, this is serious. This is very, very serious. When somebody cries out and put his emotion in something, the person is giving a message. Amen? The king of glory was giving a message, this is serious. In verse 38, let's go to verse 38. Let's read aloud. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. To God be the glory. Tell your neighbor, let the rivers flow. Let the rivers flow. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. It is the will of God for the rivers to flow. But the issue here is that we don't yet understand how the rivers must flow and why the rivers should flow. But, but my burden today is to create a hunger in your heart in just a few minutes. Amen? Let's go to verse uh, 13. 39. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. 
But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him will receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Wow. Hallelujah. Jesus was not yet glorified. The Holy Spirit was not yet given. Amen? Listen, people of God. The Spirit of God comes to glorify the Father and the Son. The Spirit of God comes to glorify the Father and the Son. He is the glory of God. If you follow the patterns of God, the glory of God, the mighty glory of God is the person of the Holy Spirit. You know, in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all of them have their function. The Father, as I told you, is the last appeal in the universe. There is no one who is greater than the Father. He is the one who answers prayer. He is the only one in the Godhead who never prays. He doesn't need to. To who shall he pray to? <laughs> he is the only person of the Godhead. The Bible makes it clear that he does not pray. The, the Son prays. The Holy Spirit prays. Amen? But the Father does not pray. Now, the Son of God is the one who provides access to the Father. Without him, you have no access. Amen? Without the Son of God, you cannot be saved. You can believe in God all your life and go to hell. If you don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God, you will go to hell. But in the Godhead, the Holy Spirit is the only one the one who is known to carry the resources of the Father and the Son. Amen? I am bringing you back to some of the things I shared. He carries the resources of the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is the secret of the power of God. And now, this morning as I was praying, the Lord emphasized in my spirit to bring out a certain truth that will change your life. Just getting it will change your life. That's why I want everyone to listen carefully. The spirit of God is the secret of the Christian life. Amen? Is the secret of the Christian life. You know, in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are all equal. They, they are equal. Say with me, equal. And they are also self-existing. It means the Father is full. The Holy Spirit is full. Jesus is complete. Amen? It means they don't need anything. The Holy Spirit does not need anything. The Father does not need anything. The Holy Spirit, all of them are self-existent and they are complete. You, I hope you got that. Okay. If they are complete... Then there is a mystery here. The mystery is, why did Jesus, Jesus had to wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon him? Some of you are looking there, pondering, looking at me, say, what is the answer? Why did Jesus, if he is complete, why did he wait for the spirit to come upon him? Now, if you look at creation, the Bible says in the beginning, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, what I minister in, in Canada. Some of you know that verse. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. It says, let's read uh, aloud. 1 to 3, go. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen. God created the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. 
Verse 2 says what? Let's go to verse 2. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Wow. The spirit of God. God created the heavens and the earth. But what happened? It was without form and void. And the spirit of God did what? Was moving upon the face of the waters. Because in the Godhead, there is a mystery of divine order. The Holy Spirit is the one who carries the resources of the Father and the Son. He make things happen. Now, in verse 3, you will see the manifestation of the Lord Jesus when the Bible says what? Let's, let's read verse 3. Verse 3 says, Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And as I explained in, um, in Canada, the light, the sun was created on which day? The third day. The sun was created when? So, wh who is this light? It's a person. The Lord Jesus Christ. You see the Father, the Son, I mean the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son on the first three verses of the Bible. Because the Son was not yet created. The Son which was created on the third day, if you read down, you'll find when the Son was created. That's why the Bible says in John chapter 1, if you go to John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5 or so to 7, you will see who was that light. Let's read. If you, if you open John chapter 1, let's read aloud. Hallelujah. John 1. Let's read from verse 1, verse 1, verse 1. Verse 1 to 7. Are you there? Let's read aloud. 1, 2, 3, go. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Who is, who is the Word? Who is God? The Word. Hmm? The Word was with God, and the Word is God. The Word was God. Amen? It's talking about who? Jesus. It's talking about Jesus. Verse 2. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 2. Three. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. That's why the son had to show himself on the third verse. Because the son is the creator. God created the world through him. And the Bible says in verse, let's continue verse four. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hallelujah. The light was, the, the life was what? The light. the light of men. Continue. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. God is speaking in the new covenant what happened in the first three verses of the Bible. This light shined where? In darkness. And the, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Because at this time, the sun was not yet created. What was that light? The God of light, Jesus himself. For he is who? The light of the world. And in verse 6 says, let's read verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Verse 7. This man came to for a witness, to bear witness of the light. That all through him might believe. Hallelujah. To bear witness of the light. Who is the light? You got it. You got it. So Jesus is the light. He came to bear witness of the light. Amen. Say with me. He came to bear witness of the light. Shout it. Say the light. Say Jesus is the light hallelujah glory be to god glory be to god in verse 8 and verse 9 one two three go 
Let's read. He was not that light. That was talking about John. But was sent to bear witness of that light. Wow. That light. Verse, verse, verse 9. Let's read. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. The true light is a person, Jesus Christ. Light is not the sun. The sun was created to be the artificial light. As it, you got it, as a representative of that light. The true light is a person, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why, as I explained in Canada, it is so important to understand one thing. Wherever he is, the light shines. The heaven, heaven does not need the sun because the light is there. The Bible said the sun, the father and the son are the light of heaven. They don't need the sun. Amen? And that's why if you go to heaven, you can't find your shadow. Because he is light and in him there is no darkness, no shadow of turning. So the real light is the king himself. That's why in heaven you can't find shadows. Because no darkness exists there. On earth you find shadow because it is artificial light. Just a representation of the lamb. The lamb alone is the light of the world. That is why I want you to understand something. If you reject Jesus, hell is known as the place of darkness. Because it is the absence of the light. The light of God is the Lord Jesus. When you say no to him, you will spend eternity in darkness. Because he alone is light. Those who have been to hell can tell you the darkness is so intense in hell that it is as though you can cut it with a knife. You put your hand in front of you, here yeah, you can't see your hand. It is all dark and gloomy. Why? You rejected the light and you have darkness as your way of life forever. He alone is light. And once you say yes to him, you enjoy his light forever. Once you say no to him, you will enjoy darkness that you have selected. Jesus is the light of the world. And in him there is no darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to shout a shout of victory. Shout at me. He is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Are you excited? Amen. I want you to understand that that light lives inside of you. That's why Jesus calls you the light of the world. Because the light lives inside of you, you have become the light of the world. So you are small Jesus walking on earth. You carry the life of the world inside of you. Wherever you go, light goes. You enter a store, light has entered that store. You enter a grocery store, the light of God has shone in that store. Because you carry the light of the world. And therefore, you are a shining being. Do you know a Satanist explained something? I, I, I attended an event where a former Satanist who came to the Lord explained how when he was in the spiritual realm, I think for 18 years, in the demonic realm, he said, Believers are seen in the spiritual realm as beings of light. Yes. He said in the realm of the spirit, they can see a believer and an unbeliever easily. They can separate the hypocrite from the true. Because the hypocrites have little or no light on them. And that those who are walking with God, they are seen in the realm of the spirit as light. So when you are walking out there, a Satan is, is passing. He sees you, he sees light. So, the truth is this, child of God, you are shining. Whether you know it or not, you are shining. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And let me tell you, the scripture is both spiritual and literal. It means when Jesus says something, you can take it to the bank. You are the light of the world. Amen. So, wherever you are, you are shining. At your job, you are shining. You are the light. Amen? Shout with me, I am the light. 
of the world. Glory be to God. That is what Jesus said. So child of God, you are light. And when you walk, you light is walking. Wherever you go, light is walking. That's why it's a horrible thing for light to go to places of death. You only go there to give light, not to be part of darkness. That's why the Bible says light and darkness cannot mix. Amen? Amen. Say with me, I am light. God has made me light. Hallelujah. So the, this, so this second he said, the moment they see a child of God from afar, they know. And, and, and I've come to the conclusion that why should they know you and you don't know them? I am saying child of God, it's not okay that the devil's people have an advantage over the people of God. Why should they see and you don't see? This thing of not seeing in the realm of the spirit is not scriptural. God wants you to see in the realm of the spirit to differentiate between that which is true and that which is fake. Amen? To know that you know that this is wrong. Because it's not okay for Satan is to deceive people of God. Hallelujah. Say with me, it's not okay. That I don't see. It is God's will that I may see. It's so serious in scripture until the Lord said, Who is as blind as my servant? It's not your portion for the unbelievers and the sinners and the satanists to know you and yet you cannot know them. They can come around you, come to your house or come to church and then you don't even know they are sitting there. Those days are over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Say to, to, to yourself, Lord, I see in the realm of the spirit. I walk in the realm of the spirit. I experience the things of heaven. I see and I move in the spirit. I cannot be deceived by the children of darkness. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now this light, the king of glory promised us someone from, if you see John chapter 16, he talked about the, the, the promise of the father. And he called the Holy Spirit, the glory that you and I knew from the foundation of the world. Who was there from the foundation? Even the angels were not. The, the, from the foundation, the beginning of everything, it was the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So he was talking about who? The Holy Spirit. The glory that we knew before the earth was even formed. Who is that glory? The Holy Spirit. Say with me, the Holy Spirit. So I want to draw your attention to something very important. This will help you. This will transform your life. If you know the glory of God, you glorify God. The secret to glorify God is to know the glory of God. When you experience the glory of God, then you begin to glorify God. Tell your neighbor you will glorify God. If you know his glory, you will glorify him. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, child of God, I have, I'm getting to be very excited. Yes. I'm telling you very excited because I am understanding the mysteries of God. The Holy Spirit is the secret of the Christian life. And the more you experience him, the more you are changed forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Child of God, 
He is the glory of God. My wife was sharing with you how the conference in Canada was named um, Holy Spirit Conference. And it was the less attended of all the conferences I've ever ministered in Canada. The less, yes. Because the children of God will make excuses when it comes to the Holy Spirit. They just believe, okay, I can pray in tongues. I don't need much. It's okay. They don't understand the fact that the Holy Spirit is the most misunderstood person of the Godhead. And the one less known. But all of scripture is full of him. Do you know who was speaking in the Old Testament constantly? The Spirit of the Lord came upon me. The Spirit of the Lord. It is the Holy Spirit. He's God. It is the Holy Spirit. He's God. He's the most misunderstood person of the Godhead. That is why, child of God, the Holy Spirit, if you get to know him, God begins to use you. Why did God, we are having a conference, we have a slide, put it up, a conference with Pastor Benny Hinn and the other men of God, women of God. This conference is a special conference because I was telling the people on Friday, we don't know how long we'll have this man of God alive. When I was a young boy of 14, 15, I picked up a book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. That book changed my life. The book moved me from a believer who was struggling to understanding the Holy Spirit. And from that time, I rose above the people who were together, the young men. I became their leader. Because the Holy Spirit promotes you. And transform you to a believer of power. There is no man of God on earth that God has used so much to reveal the mysteries of the Holy Spirit like Pastor Benny Hinn. Check the men of God on earth. From all over the earth, they have been influenced by his message on the Holy Spirit. This man... Is in the former generation and he's on his way out. He has been talking about it. The other day he talked about it. I remember I wept like a baby. And the Lord is telling him it will soon be time. And let me tell you, he gets about a hundred invitations a day. About how many? Invitation a day. And yet, he's coming to us the second time. There is something, God. And the Lord is telling me, it may be, this is our last chance. Believe me, children of God, something will happen that will change our life forever. I am expecting to receive an impartation of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to get this. What is happening and what will happen will cause history to change. Because this man, we don't know how long we'll have him. And one of the things the devil does is that he gives men of God what I call a parting goodbye. By trying to destroy them. Before T.A. Osborne died. Horrible things were being written against him. Or a robot before he was gone. Horrible things started. Kenneth Hagin the same thing. Do you know that even before Billy Graham died. There were horrible things being said about Billy Graham. He's a Freemason. Yes. That's why somebody wanted to send me an article against against uh, Pastor Benny Hinn, I told him, don't send it. I'm not interested. I don't want to read it. Quote uh, any man of God before he leaves. Satan makes sure that his legacy is destroyed so that we know more, so that we don't get the impartation to the next generation. 
Because you can only get the impartation if he believed he was a man of God. That's why when they leave, there's no replacement. And Satan's strategy is to make sure that he is destroyed before you get, before you get what they call um, um, the mantle. Thank you. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is no man of God who have left without the devil producing a scandal. Before Reynard Bonke went, there was a scandal. Somebody even wrote in, uh, wrote in the internet that, oh, he's not in heaven. Yes. Yes. When you see a sc the devil begin to make scandal against a servant of God, that servant of God is on his way out. And they'll start making videos and all type of things against him. And let me tell you, a sister who is coming to this event, he was praying, she was praying, and the Lord took her out of her body. And she sent me what the Lord showed her. And the Lord showed her what is coming to this conference. And this sister is not in this country. She's coming for the conference. But she told me that what is coming to this conference is so great. And Satan will make sure that people don't come there. Yes. He said it is a special event from heaven. That's why he's flying out of country just to attend it. God took her out of her body and she saw some glorious things. And even got a word for Pastor Benny that I'll be sending to him. I want you to understand, people of God, we are at the brink of the release of the mantle. The mantle is very close. In Canada, I was praying for this event. The Lord told me, my son, don't even look at the cost because we are longing that people should get um, to rent, to get the, the, the hotels. Please, I beg you in the name of Jesus, get the hotels. The little you pay for that hotel will save us thousands of dollars. You know, what the hotel does is that they give you the hall because the hall should cost about 25000 That's why I don't know why. $25,000 a day. They give you for around ten thousand dollars a day so that you cover it up with a number of rooms we have just a hundred rooms last time we took 200 this time we got intelligence <laughs> we got some wisdom we took just a hundred room i am pleading with you in the name of the lord jesus to go and get the rooms don't say i live in westminster it's a 45 minute drive i will just be going there god forgive you the fact of the community of believers being there is important. Amen? Your very presence in that hotel carries the glory. So please make sure you get a room. Tell you and ask your neighbor, do you have a room yet? If you don't, just repent. And get it done. Look at your neighbor's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody's asking me. <laughs> so listen. So please get a room. Even if you live in Baltimore or close to Baltimore. Amen. Because we are a community of believers coming together for a purpose. All our online church, make sure you are there. Make sure you are there. Hallelujah. And my beloved brother Tony and Cindy James, God wants you to be there. So just arrange it. It's a word from the Lord. It's one of our online brethren. They are listening to me. <laughs> so I want you to understand, child of God, something is happening. As I was praying in Canada, and I, I called Dr. Miles, we talk, and then talk with um, um, uh, Dr. Linda. Vicar was explaining to me something that is happening. And as, we, as we're talking, I got a holy anger inside of me. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, my son, make sure you honor my servant before he goes. 
And he said, don't look at the expenses because I'm the one that has been providing for your church and your ministry. You are sponsoring about 200 missionaries, but you have not luck. I'm taking care of them. You are giving a lot to the, to the world. And I have been the one providing. This conference is my will. And it's my will, not just for you, but for the church. I want to visit the people in a special way. And when I visit them, I'm going to cause a transformation in, in the mysteries of the Holy Spirit. And I, was, and I received a low blow from the Lord. I want to say, do you know what the low blow says? You don't yet know my spirit as you should. I was shocked because I've been studying about the Holy Spirit all this while. And the Lord is telling me, you don't yet know as you should. I was literally shocked. I said, Lord, that is a serious blow. Let me tell you, it is something that I would have loved to hide from you. <laughs> but I had to tell you because it was a rebuke from the Lord. And the Lord told me, begin to un study and understand the mysteries of my spirit. Because that is where the secret of a glorious ministry is. Because when the spirit of God is moving, things begin to happen. Hallelujah. And then the Lord drew my attention to this fact. About the Holy Spirit is the glory of God. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is the glory of God. There is something coming, people of the Most High. That will change your life, change your history forever. A, an encounter with the Holy Spirit. That will change you forever. Because this glorious Holy Spirit is right here on earth. Amen. And there is a mantle that will fall in Baltimore. A mantle that will fall in Baltimore. That will change the course of history. And the Lord told me, say, my son, even if there are just 10 of you, 100 of you, 200 of you, I will show up in a special way. I want all of you to understand, people of God, the church of the Most High God, we are entering in a, in a time where miracles will become so, so, so abundant that the world will begin to say this is the finger of God the person sitting near to you who hold the lame and the lame will walk it's the time for the mighty manifestation of the Holy Spirit my wife and I on Wednesday are going to Ghana and you know what we are believing that Ghana will be a revolution we are going there to minister to students. It's an event I wanted to cancel to after the conference. But the Lord told me, when you have an opportunity to minister to the future leaders of Ghana, you better take it. They are gathering. The first event, they are bringing up 23 schools together. We have higher bosses Many hundreds of buses they'll be bringing 23 schools together. This is huge. And you know, you know what they did? The principals, they have agreed to give us three hours with the students. Three hours. So you have three hours to preach, to heal, to cast out demons, to do anything. Wow. It's so serious that they are a little bit conscious, they say, please don't show it online because some of our students come from other religions. Yes. So, so don't, you, you can tape it, but avoid live streaming it. And I say, thank you, no problem. No problem. Jesus died for those who came from other religions too. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. And then we move again to another school. 
And the Lord has been telling me, understanding the glory of God is the secret of the power of God. The glory of God is a person. Jesus Christ is the glory of God. Tell your neighbor, Jesus. Jesus is Lord. And the glory of God is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Then in John's, let's go to John chapter, I think chapter 17, verse 22. John chapter 17, verse 22. Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. He was in, in chapter 16, he was talking about who? The Holy Spirit. Amen? The glory he has given me, the Lord Jesus was speaking what he just said in chapter 16, he has given them who? The Holy Spirit. So I want to tell you, you have been given the glory. No, your, your excitement is suspicious. You have been given the glory. And the glory is the Holy Spirit. Wherever the Spirit of God is, Christianity is exciting. The one who is full of the Holy Spirit, Christianity is exciting. The Lord wants to do something in your life that will change your life forever. Amen. Hallelujah. That is why, child of God, on the 4th, July 4th, no, July 4th is one of the, the second day of our conference. I'm encouraging everybody when I was praying, the Lord told me, tell everybody to bring the, the flag. Because that's the day we'll be praying for the United States in a very special way. And we will be praying and destroying the, the enemies of America. And some of the enemies of America are in power today. The Lord will destroy it. The Lord will shatter it. Hallelujah. Don't be disturbed by what they are trying to do to President Trump. They are wasting their time. Whether you sue him, lock him up, do what... He will be the next president of the United States. This time, this time, we are wiser. We now, I was telling my wife in Canada, we now know our authority. We have experienced knowledge of who we are. That's why in October we are doing what I call a, serve, a, 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 a 30 days of warfare. 30 days of prayer. So get ready. October, we are preparing for war. And the enemy's come will be destroyed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Satanists will no more rule America in Jesus' name. Because let me tell you, the Satanists are here to put their demonic entities. And one of their demonic plan is to instigate demonic things that brings destruction all the pursuit of transgender of homosexuality and the rest is satanic when a government backs it they are backing satan and that God if we live in this country and we don't stop it the judgment of God will come because I have children here we must stop it Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, we will stop it. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor, we will stop the onslaught of Satanism. It shall burn in Jesus' name. The enemies come, the devils come, will burn. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 
on the 4th of July, come, get your, your warfare shoes. <laughs> I repeat, get your warfare shoes. Glory be to God. Why the 4th of July? Because it's Independent Day. We are claiming America back to God. And we shall pray violently. We shall proclaim violently. Hallelujah. And God is going to do wonders. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So I'm telling you, child of God, we live in the days of glory. And the Holy Spirit is the glory of God. And knowing the Holy Spirit is knowing the glory. I want you to listen to some of the things the Lord Jesus said. Amen. The Lord Jesus said to the Father. He said, I have glorified you. Say with me, I have glorified you. I have glorified you. Are you getting it? The goal of the Godhead is that the Father be glorified. When the sick are healed, the Bible says the Father is glorified. When Lazarus was raised from the dead, the Bible says, and, and God was glorified. Amen? And the Lord Jesus said what? If I, through the Spirit, if I, through the Spirit, say with me, through the Spirit, so Jesus was saying it is all done through the spirit. So the secret is the spirit of God glorifying the father and the son. That's why in John 16, the Lord Jesus said when he is come, he will glorify me. He will take that which is mine and show it to you and he will glorify me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit comes to glorify the Father, to glorify the Son. So the church of God, for you and I to glorify the Father and the Son, we must move it in the Spirit. Because the Father himself said clearly that God can only be worshipped in the Spirit. The Bible says what? For the Father seek who search to worship him the time is coming and now it is when the true worshipers will worship the father in what in spirit and i want to tell you a basic secret you can't worship the living god without the spirit because worship is glorifying god to glorify god you must worship in the glory of god that is why the Holy Spirit is the secret of real worship. Oh my God, I pray for understanding, for spiritual understanding. Hallelujah! That's why the scripture says, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It is by my spirit. Worship, true worship is only by the spirit of God. You can't do it in the flesh. It will not go. It is in the spirit that God is glorified. The father is glorified. For Jesus said, he will glorify me. I give you a secret, people of the living God. Jesus will be glorified by the spirit the father is glorified by the spirit if you want to give god the maximum glory move in the spirit no 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 you're not getting what i'm saying tell your neighbor neighbor if you want to glorify god you must move in the spirit hallelujah hallelujah any message and any ministry that is not done in the spirit is dead. Because the scripture says clearly only the spirit gives life. The latter gives what? Dead. The spirit gives life. So the secret of the life of God flowing to men is the spirit. 
The first person you meet as an unbeliever is who? The Holy Spirit. Because he is the one who convicts of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to you your need for Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah! That is why in creation, the second person that showed up in the Bible was who? The Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Because, before, because when he moved, then things begin to happen. Before Jesus came, who came upon Mary? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one who prepared the path for Jesus to move. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He prepares the path. He came and the Bible says, the child that you will have is of the Holy Spirit. That's what the scripture says. It was saying the child you have is of who? The Holy Spirit. Oh. Oh, hallelujah. The Bible says the Spirit shall come upon you. And the Holy One that will come upon you. The whole, and the Holy One will overshadow you. Listen carefully. The Spirit will come. And who? The Holy One. The Father and the Holy Spirit had to come to, to, for what to happen? For Jesus to come into the room of Mary. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! The Godhead walking together. The mystery of God. Listen, people of God. The church has never understood. We are dealing with the living God here. The Holy Spirit is the living God. You have someone on earth today the church has not known. And he is the living God. The Holy Spirit. He's right here on earth. The problem with why we have suffered on earth is that we have not known the glory. Glory will give you joy. Glory will give you peace. Glory will make life easy for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I was sharing on Friday, the Lord, no, uh, the, the man of God spoke something. Uh, um, Pastor Ben, he said something. Ministering one of the other days. He said, ministry is in the overflow. And I got it as a revelation. And what does that mean? It means that, he said, the greatest trouble believers have had is that they minister with a field life. When you are filled, it's just for you. You must be overflowing to give others. Naraka I, I, I think she's getting it. I think she's getting it. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you are full and then you are ministering, you find yourself dry. After ministry. You know why? Because you are giving yourself. And that which is just enough for you. But in the overflow is the ministry. That's why Washmani used to say, the one who ministers in the overflow of God does not get dry after ministry. Because he still has enough to feed himself. Are you getting me? Yes. Child of God. Ministry is in the overflow of God. It means you have so much that others can drink from you. Amen. The problem is that believers, instead of ministering with rivers of living water, they are ministering with, 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 with well of living water. They have enough to drink. But not to give out. Once they start giving out, Satan starts striking at them. They get burned out. And they get discouraged. They say, God, I've served you all this while. Why am I not? Why am I not? The reason is because you have been pouring yourself. You have been pouring what is just for you. 
that's why you can come minister in a place and go back you are so dry that you find yourself even falling in sin the reason is because you have been given that which should keep you instead of that which is the overflow of God ministry is in the overflow and that is why I want to encourage you the church of the living God don't miss the time of your visitation this man pastor Benny has ministered in the overflow most of his life that's why he can just enter his service and people begin to fall in the overflow your shadow heals the sick no 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 some people are not getting it in the overflow i say your shadow heal the sick yeah. hallelujah yeah. in the overflow say with me my shadow heal the sick in the overflow handkerchief that are taken from you are used to heal the sick christianity is god doing his work through you without you being dry because rivers when it's flowing don't get dry but a well can easily get dry that's why the bible says the well of living water and rivers of living water the bible does not say river it says rivers because it is different anointing it's in the plural so child of god you were made not to run dry <laughs> oh my god i'm enjoying my message i pray you get this in the name of jesus you were created not to run dry your service should make you stronger when you get out and preach you should come out more powerful understanding this thing i was telling my wife after i minister i stood and i ministered to the brethren in canada for for about 11 hours we went back to the hotel and i told my wife i'm still full the presence of god was so strong that if you stand in front of me i could tell you what the lord is saying my eyes were open in the realm of the spirit. And the Lord spoke to me. It's because you are understanding the overflow life. He said, I want you to understand this and carry it to my children. And they will never minister and feel dry anymore. I don't call my people to become dry because they have rivers that never run dry. The mystery is that the church has never ministered. Many believers on earth have truly never ministered with rivers. They minister with the well. The issue is that the well never leaves you because God gave it to you. But the rivers is to go higher. And when you go higher, you are to flow and yet not run dry. Because you have enough to, for others to drink and to water yourself. Never forget, child of God, when it is rivers, it's super abundant. It is what? Super abundant. When it is just well, Christianity becomes a struggle of up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. God has never called you to have an up and down Christianity. The power of the Holy Spirit does not go down. He goes up continuously. Hallelujah. He does not know how to fail. He does not know how to go down. The power of God is a crescendo. And he moves and moves and moves. It does not go down. When you find yourself going down, something of your flesh is walking. The power of the living God is the glory of God. And he does not share his glory with no man. And his glory does not go down. If you have been to heaven, the throne of God is found in the highest mountain. Since it's found in the highest mountain, I have good news for you. 
have good news for you. Please turn off all the microphones. Tell your neighbor, there is good news. There is good news. You have been called to be in the mountain. Are you getting Grant, this message is for you. You have been called to be in the mountain. Oh, children of God, I'm excited. I have just a few minutes, four minutes to go. Because I have, we are getting a flight today to California to meet with Prophet Sado. And we'll just be there for one night and come back. Yes, yeah, just one night. This evening. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we have to arrange to uh, possibly pick up uh, Susan Hines, Pastor Benny's wife, also. To, to take him. He wants to meet, she wants to meet with Prophet Sado. I want you to hear this, children of God. Understand this. The God of heaven has called you not to minister you on your own. You are never to preach the gospel in your own struggle. You are to preach the gospel in his power. And from today, understand that the glory of God has been given to you. We read the Bible says, I have given you what? The glory. Amen. It says what? Let's read aloud. One, two, three, go. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. That they may be one, just as we are one. And let me reveal to you a secret. The glory of God makes you one. You learn to appreciate your brother and your sister. You don't fight your brother, you don't fight your sister. When there is disunity, the Holy Spirit just moves away. Because this unity does not glorify God. And when the glory is affected, God withdraws. Wow, 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 wow. Do you want to minister to people? You must love people. If you avoid people, God will not give you the glory. Remember, ministry is what? The overflow. Say with me the overflow. So rivers cannot flow if love is not flowing. Because love gives you access to the overflow. Love gives you access to the rivers. Because the rivers is to minister to others. If you don't love others, you will stay with your well. To flow with the glory, you must understand the glory is love. You must love the unlovable. You must love the people of God. Let me tell you. One day, I wanted, I was, in, I was somewhere and I, I wanted to say something. Because about somebody, they were commenting about a man of God. And da, da, da. As I wanted to say it, the Lord told me, if you want my anointing, because I was preparing for a service, you can't walk out of love and move in love. I was shocked. I just withdrew from it because when you talk about people, you are not walking in love. Especially negative about people. Real of. You know, Ken Hagen shared a story where he met a man, he was over 60, then 65 or so. He looked like somebody in between his 30 and 40s. He asked the man, What is your secret? He pointed at his two lips. He said, I never, never speak against people all my life. He said, because of that, he said, when I was 21 years old, I listened to a message on love and I believed it. From that day, 
the highest I do for people is pray for them. If you want to touch life, God cannot give you impact on the people you don't like. You must love them to minister to them. The Holy Spirit is the love of God manifested. And let me tell you, that's why when you pray in tongues for two to three hours, you notice that the love of God begins to flow f- from you to people. Have you not noticed that? When you pray in tongues for more than one hour, two, two hours, the love of God is so intense. You move like this to somebody, you sense love flowing towards that person. I have seen it happen to me many times. I, after praying, I'll go out like this. I'm driving. I feel as though I love the whole. Everybody I see, I just love him. I don't know who they are, whether they are sinners or no sinners. I just feel the love of God flowing towards them. And then the Lord told me, it is me flowing through you. When you want more of that love, spend time in the Holy Spirit. He carries the resources of the Father and the Son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be angry with your wife praying in tongues. The two don't go. Somebody shout, oh God, you are having experiences, brother. You want to love your wife? Pray in tongues. Natural love will move to spiritual love. The one who prays in tongues notice love flowing. Because the Holy Spirit is liquid love. And when he is flowing through you, people receive ministry. For God's ministry is love released. Is the love of God unveiled to man. Child of God, tell your neighbor, I love you. Don't just say it to your husband. I see Rose Mavere looking to the husband with such eye of love. Ha! <laughs> The newly wedded couple. I saw it. I caught it very well. <laughs> that type of look. Oh, I'm sure your husband is saying, hey, 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 do it more. Child of God, do you want to touch the world? You must love the world for whom Jesus died. You must love the people for whom Jesus died. You must honor the people for whom Jesus died. And when love is flowing, ministry is given. Hallelujah. The man of God, God used for healing so much. He said he will begin to pray until the love of God begins to flow towards the lame man. He said, don't he just get there and start praying for the sick. No, he will notice God's love flowing and then he will pull, rise up in Jesus' name. Because love goes with healing. Love goes with prophecy. Love goes with the release of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why if you want love to flow continuously, pray in tongues. The one who prays in tongues releases love. Liquid love begins to flow through you. Amen. 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 We are the home of the Holy Spirit. The Lord told me in Canada, my son, I want you to begin to honor the Holy Spirit in your church. It doesn't happen in many places. They continuously talk and just have just the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit is forgotten. Where we will honor him here. And I want to announce to you a secret. When he is honored, the Father and the Son are glorified. (laughs) Hallelujah! Do you know, one morning I worshipped the Holy Spirit for about 30 minutes. Then as I turned to go out, something happened. I noticed love for the Lord Jesus. As, as, as if I've never had before. 
tears began to flow to me. I began to understand how he died for me. I began to understand how he loves me. And the Lord spoke to me. Do you know how you, you feel such strong love for the Holy Spirit? It's because my word says, the spirit and the bride says, come Lord Jesus. Once you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the result is love for Jesus and the Father. He is the one that instilled the love of God inside of you. He is the one that stirs your heart to love the Father, to love the Son. The Holy Spirit is the secret. If you have been struggling to pour yourself towards the Father, to pour yourself towards Jesus, who you need is the Holy Spirit. He loves the Father through you. He loves the Son through you. Hallelujah. So the more you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the more the love of the Father begins to flow through you. And you find yourself loving Jesus. You can't hold your tears. Tears are just flowing. Tears of love begins to flow. And you begin to love Jesus. You begin to shout Jesus. You begin to say, Jesus, I love you. You begin to proclaim, Lord Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. Child of God. The God of heaven has made Christianity easy by sending someone to be with you. And he's right here. He's called the Holy Spirit. He's right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's right here. The Spirit of God. He's so good. He has come to make Christianity easy and enjoyable. To experience God, you must know the Holy Spirit. And once you know him, you begin to enjoy the living God. And your life begins to change. And around you, men begin to see this one is full of the Holy Ghost. And when you are full of the Holy Ghost, the result is the love of the living God. Child of God, Christianity is easy because it is in the spirit fellowship with the spirit and you begin to love on parallel you begin to sing you begin to love the unlovable you will begin to love even people who criticize you Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is a victorious life. It was never made for you to struggle in the flesh. The Holy One is here. The love of God is flowing in this place. Just begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him. Begin to honor Him. Holy Spirit, we love you. We worship you. We thank you because the secret of Christianity is revealed. Lord Jesus, the glory which the Father gave you, you have given to us. That we may be one, that we may love each other. We worship you, we bless you. Rakadoroba shanda darabaka shanda. See here, they can see here, Nana.